What up, homies? Welcome back, Conspiracy University. All right, I don't want to take up too much of y'all's time here. I got something short, short video. Operation Starfish Prime. I'm just going to go over this, and uh, I'm going to give y'all my opinion on what exactly they were doing, all right? So, Starfish Prime was a high-altitude nuclear test conducted by the United States, a joint effort of the Atomic Energy Commission and the Defense Atomic Support Agency. It was launched from Johnson Atoll on July 9, 1962, and was the largest nuclear test conducted in outer space, and one of five conducted by the U.S. in space. A Thor rocket carrying a W-49 thermonuclear warhead and a MK-2 reentry vehicle was launched from Johnson Atoll in the Pacific Ocean, about 900 miles west-southwest of Hawaii. The explosion took place at an altitude of 250 miles above a point 19 miles southwest of Johnston Atoll. It had a yield of 1.4 MT. The explosion was about 10 degrees above the horizon as seen from Hawaii at 11 p.m. Hawaii time. So this also correlates with Operation Fishbowl as well as uh, Operation Dominique. So uh, they all go uh, hand in hand, y'all. So that's why I didn't really break those down, but I'm going to read a little bit here. The Starfish test was one of five high-altitude tests grouped together as Operation Fishbowl within the larger Operation Dominic. A series of tests in 1962 begun in response to the Soviet announcement on August 30th, 61, that they would end a three-year moratorium on testing. In 58, the United States had complex six high-altitude nuclear tests that produced many unexpected results and raised many new questions, according to the U.S. government's project officer's interim report on the Starfish Prime Project. The Starfish test was originally planned as the second in the Fishbowl series, but the first launch, Bluegill, was lost by the radar tracking equipment and had to be destroyed in flight. Also, the initial Starfish launch attempt on June 20th was aborted in flight, this time due to failure of the Thor launch vehicle. The Thor missile flew a normal trajectory for 59 seconds, then the rocket engine stopped, and the missile began to break apart. The range safety officer ordered the destruction of the missile and warhead. The missile was between 30,000 and 35,000 feet in altitude when it was destroyed. Parts of the missile and some radioactive contamination fell upon Johnson Atoll and nearby Sand Island and the surrounding ocean. So, like I said, you know, I, I, I don't know for a fact what exactly they were doing up there, right? Or what they were trying to do. But my opinion, again, my opinion, the Van Allen Belt, right? What I mean, some can what you, some would consider the uh, quote-unquote firmament or, you know, dome type thing. But basically, it's a, it's a little layer of something above us that they can't penetrate, right? Which is why they say they can't get to uh, certain parts of, or, or cannot get to space because they can't penetrate the Van Allen Belt. Van Allen Radiation Belt. A Van Allen Radiation Belt is a zone of energetic charged particles, most of which originate from the solar wind that are captured by and held around a planet by that planet's magnetosphere. Earth has two such belts, and sometimes others may be temporarily created. The belts are named after James Van Allen, who was credited with their discovery. Earth's two main belts extend from an altitude of about 640 to 58,000 kilometers above the surface, in which region radiation levels vary. Most of the particles that form the belt are thought to come from solar wind and other particles by cosmic rays. By trapping the solar wind, the magnetic field deflects those energetic particles and protects the atmosphere from destruction. The belts are in the inner region of the Earth's magnetic field. The belt traps energetic electrons and protons. Other nuclei, such as alpha particles, are less prevalent. The belt endangers satellites. The belts endanger satellites, which must have their sensitive components protected with adequate shielding if they spend significant time near that zone. In 2013, NASA reported that the Van Allen probes had discovered a transient third radiation belt which was observed for four weeks until it was destroyed by a powerful interplanetary shock wave from the sun. So, like I was saying, y'all, my opinion, this Thor missile here that they shot up there was them trying to uh, penetrate or get through that uh, radiation belt. So, uh, you know, so maybe something that y'all would want to look into. I thought it was interesting. And uh, again, y'all, that's just my opinion, right? I don't know if that's what they were trying to do. But from my research and, and the conclusion I've came to, that's what I feel. But once again, y'all, I appreciate every single one of y'all who come over here and rock with me. Y'all keep your eyes open out there, homies. Stay safe.